Hello, 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 and welcome to a brand new series of Empyrean Galactic Survival. I will be uh, playing this solo because I figure if I have one solo kind of game that I can play, I might be able to fill in some gaps in between uh, videos. I know I still got... Uh, some Hollow Knight to finish off because I still have a whole slew of that to finish. But nobody's really been watching that, so I've been kind of lazy on that part. But there is a modification that I downloaded for Empyrean Galactic Survival. It is a scenario, and they call it Reforged Eden. It is pretty much, as it says at the top, a vastly modified version of Empyrean Galactic Survival. It seems to give you a lot more items, a lot more quests, missions to do, and it seems to balance things out to make it more difficult. The basic Empyrean Galactic Survival ex experience is rather easy for the most part but you can get a decent amount of gameplay out of the vanilla experience and I've had my fill but I've definitely needed something a little more uh, different something that that was more involved so I was watching uh, dad and Dax play games a friend of mine play reforged Eden so I thought you know this would be a really good scenario to probably play chill record a bit I may not be super talkative I might it depends on what gets brought up in in front of me that I might be able to talk about explain you know I just hope that uh, it isn't too boring or it isn't too quiet for most of you out there uh, but anyways, please uh, give Dad and Dax <laughs> Play Games uh, some love over there. Uh, they inspired me to play this just by watching their videos. And they have a whole lot of other stuff that you can check out, like their Ark Survival uh, or even uh, Raft. That they Is that what it's called? Raft? Yeah, I believe it's called Raft. It's uh, another survival game. Uh, they they play a whole bunch of survival games. Sometimes they do it with each other, for the most part. And then there are times where there are some solo plays. But I think uh, if you like calm, collective, yet still, still interesting gameplay, uh, I recommend Dad and Dax play games. And I'll try and leave a link in the description and probably on the video if I remember to do that. So please forgive me that next play games if you watch this. I might forget. <laughs> Sometimes that happens to me. Uh, so let's actually get in here. Uh, there's a few things I do want to turn on, which is obviously CPU points and mass and volume. It's the way it's meant to be played. Um, What's this? Block limits for certain devices. Weapon limit per vessel. Ah, uh, should I turn that on? Blueprints must be placed on a and when being spawned. Um I think I'll leave that false. Because CPU and mass are already going to play a role in all this. And I think this is more or less uh, for servers. Um, it's easy. I was recommended to turn everything on easy. But I like to push myself. So I might just leave it pretty much normal. The only thing I want to change is food consumption on slow because I feel normal is a little bit fast. 
um, as for everything else, I think it's all right. So we'll call this Reford Eden Survival. Our start location. Let's start on something like cycle two. Very easy temper starting plan with no base tax, increased resources for more casual starting experience. Lake swamps, planet with a multitude of mountain range, cap peaks. Recommended for experience who do not need the basic tutorial on when to start and a base with advanced equipment. Um, let's start with the basic and we'll just go from here. Let's give the seed a jolt here. Set that. And we'll give it a go. Now, this mod pack changes a lot about the game. It adds in lots of many different upgrades for your suits. It gives you more weaponry. It changes the way the AI behaves to be a bit smarter. I don't know how smart, but I know there are some very deadly, deadly NPCs and enemies and stuff like that. Um, it changes the way CPU works. The way CPU normally works in Imperium, uh, don't mind the debug in the upper right hand. I completely forgot to disable that uh, from when I was last testing. Oh look, world's already loaded. That was pretty fast. All right, so we're gonna land next to this wreckage to the left here. But as I was saying, uh, the way CPU normally works is uh, it's based on tiers. At this tier, you would have so much CPU. And in the vanilla, every block would count towards that CPU count, which can be a bit of an annoyance. Crash landing. And let me disable the debug information, get that out of the way. Uh, you've awoken in a damaged escape pod, injured and alone after it's plummeted through the atmosphere of an unknown world. No memory of how you got here and a little at your disposal. The crackling of your suit radio puts you on the path towards answers somewhere in the wilderness of this alien planet. The end. Ugh, what is this place? Where the hell am I? Last thing I remember, I was aboard a pollen, pollen station getting ready to ship out. What happened to the station? To the crew? I've got to radio the fleet. UH, UCH fleet, come in. I repeat, UCH fleet, come in. Please respond. Seems like that there's radio static going on. There's some canned meat. Good starting food. Please? Command? Anyone? Please respond. Static. Intel. Data. Signal. Radical. Radiation. Assist. Transmission. Proceed. It's faint, but that's definitely a UCH transmission. There's other survivors here. Alright. Let's grab our gear. There's some Christmas themed items. I'm surprised these are still there. I can't understand what they're saying. They need some way to clean up their transmission. There's probably an antenna among some of the wreckage on the ground that I can use to boost signal. It's just a matter of finding a functional device. Alrighty then. Let's get our equipment situated. Get our food placed. We definitely want bandages down. Uh. I was talking about CPU earlier, but yeah, again, CPU functions in such an odd way that can be a little daunting, comfortable even, and uh, what, it, what it does is that 
since every block counts towards CPU, you can easily fill up your CPU meter. And you'll have to slap in some extra CPU extending blocks, which only improve it by a number of tiers. And just so that's not too loud, I am going to drop the total audio just by a little bit more. Ah, some music. That should make things a little more interesting. But, uh, yeah, it'd be a little annoying to actually have to work around a ship when the blocks counted towards CPU as well as the technology. And the technology takes up a large amount of space. Eventually, with the amount of blocks you might be putting into the ship, that ship might also eventually, you know, uh, overload on CPU, and that would be bad. Um, actually, I could spend all day working on this like I usually do, but I, I don't know. Let's see, there's the broken antenna. We'll go towards that. I do have some blueprints that I plan on using for, uh, living on this planet until I can get out into space. Uh, but we'll have to do some collection of material that looks like an antenna off a Crusader class frigate. The antenna looks to be in relatively good shape despite missing, well, the rest of the ship. I should be able to connect my suit up to a maintenance port at the base of the receiver. Might require some digging if it's buried too deep. Alright. Oh my goodness. Oh, here we go. Communications uplink. Come here, come here. It looks like I can access the antenna's maintenance port from here. Establish connection to the antenna. Unsupported external device detected. Updating drivers. That's a long line of something. Communications uplink online. Uplink status. Connection established. Handshake protocol accepted. Signal received. Wait, what the hell's going on? Excellent question, Commander. And one I would be more than happy to supply the answer to, if I knew it. Unfortunately, I have been offline since initialization. Okay. So who are you? I am IDA. That's integrated data analysis analyst. A analyst. <laughs> Sorry. But you may call me Ida. A backup of the original UCH IDA to be precise. Where I am is integrated into a UCH surveillance satellite in orbit above your location. So you're an AI? That is correct, Commander. My system was rebooted when it detected your escape pod's distress beacon as it entered the upper atmosphere of, the pl of this planet. I have been attempting to connect to your suit's data, li data links since you regained consciousness, but it appears my transmitter was not able to transmit on the frequency required to access your data link until you linked with an external transceiver. Now that I am connected with your suit's computer system, I can calibrate your suit's data link so that I can interface directly with your suit and provide you with scanning and telemetry data, as is my role. So you're some kind of support AI? My original role is to utilize systems at my disposal to scan, analyze, categorize, and direct personal operations. I can do a great deal more than that, but nothing that is relevant to the curtain current situation. As you are the only UCH personnel I have detected on the planet, I can devote much of my processing power to assist you by coordinating your search efforts and supplying mapping data and identifying enemy crafts. can't remember how I got here. Everything after reaching a pollen station is a blank. Shall I read you my logs from the fleet's departure? Please do, Ida. I have 
no idea where I am or even how I got here. I need every bit of info I can get right now. At zero, at 900 hours, the UCH fleet was scheduled to leave a pollen station in orbit around Jupiter on an, jur on an expeditionary journey to Proxima Centauri, utilizing a prototype warp field generator mounted on the flagship of the fleet, the UCH 002 MS Titan. The function of the warp field was to encapsulate the entire fleet to the Titan's quantum wake and the entire fleet as a unit. Reports of weapon fire and explosions were reported from a pollen station shortly after the fleet left and all communication was lost nine minutes later. The fleet's captain decided that the approaching rescue forces were sufficient to deal with the turmoil and opted to stay the course and continue with Operation Phoenix. After exiting Jupiter's orbit, Wave Rider protocol was engaged and the Titan's warp drive began generating a stable field and the fleet inserted into hyperspace. Almost after successfully inserting into subspace, an anomaly was encountered, a spatial rift where additional planes of higher dimensional space intruded on the fabric of hyperspace. The spatial rift dragged the warp field containing the UCH fleet off course by somewhere I have estimated to be between 325,000 and 500,000 light years, but may be as high as 3 million light years. Distance and speed in hyperspace is relative, and the effects of a spatial rift on a stable warp field are as yet unknown. My logs terminate upon exit from hyperspace, as that was when IDA primary loaded this submind into a surveillance satellite and ejected it to gather intelligence. The initialization seems to have failed at the time and was triggered correctly by your escape pods beacon. So, any clue on what I should do now, Ida? Your suit's data link has now been calibrated, Commander. From now on, I shall interface with your suit directly. Oh, it's going by so fast. I have detected structures and objects which may answer both higher questions nearby. Disconnect. Alright, sorry for that. I didn't mean to get it so stuck like that. Are you receiving my transmissions, Commander? Loud and clear, Ida. And how are you on this fine sunny day? I'll go and collect things. While I assume that your inquiry is some kind of humor, Commander, it is a fact that my processing speed is down 36% to my satellite's optical lenses are cracked. So the answer to your question is well enough, considering the situation. Relax, Ida. I thought your new model AIs are capable of learning and empathy. I'm just trying to stay positive here. I figure you could do with a laugh too. I'm not designed for comedy, Commander. I am a strategic analysis AI. Do not laugh. However, I will take your suggestion under advisement and adjust my humor parameter. If it does... Oh my goodness. Um... I will have to rethink about reading the uh, entire text line because there's probably going to be a heck of a lot of it. But not only that, sometimes it scrolls by really fast. But anyways, alone on an unknown world, you stand against an unforgiving and alien world looking for anything that remains of your crew and your fleet among the wreckage. Are you truly alone? Yida may have, may have found the answers you seek. I'm going to decline for now. Are you sure you want to abort the mission? Please confirm your choice. You can start the mission via... Yep. Yeah. So I'm just going to move that out of the way for just a moment. I'm going to do some simple salvaging of this structure here. And I want to double check. The audio is not too loud. Because I know how loud these weapons and tools can be. Testing, testing. Okay. Sorry, I was just testing my microphone there for just a moment. Oh, oh, you look at that. Yep. 
far too heavy to carry. So what we need to look here, uh, I have a blueprint for a hovercraft that was made by Don Bab from Dead and Dex Play Games that I will be utilizing today. I thank him for allowing me to use this model of his and I'm sure it will serve me quite well. So I'm going to send this to the factory and load up the materials there. Oh, okay. So it did take it and it did consume it. Good, good. So that means I can go around and do some simple resource collecting. And I'm gonna. I should be able to eat. No, no, I do have to keep it selected. Okay. I'm gonna eat till I'm full. This copper. I'm gonna dig up. What is this? Herbal leaves that can help with a bit of healing. I think. Is that right? Just a bit. It'll help nonetheless. I do need some of this crushed stone if I'm going to make a base, because I'm going to need a lot of concrete. Uh, da, 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 da. Get me if I do get quiet, though. Sometimes I do get in a bit of a zone and I focus on the objective, but. I'll try and remain as informative as I possibly can. Am I wearing a suit right off the bat? Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, I'm not so big a fan of the snowman hat, but I'll, I'll wear the Santa hat just for kicks. Not that it's going to be seen most of the time. But uh, this salvage is definitely far more valuable now that I can just shove it into the uh, factory without worry of weight penalty. It might take me a moment, but early game, it's very important that I get something processed as soon as I can possibly can. As long as I can make this ruined structure uh, structurally unsound, it should all crumble, and I can pick up the components for uh, shoving into the factory. I need to make this place as structurally unsound as possible. Which might take me a moment. Press N and turn on the debug. Show structural integrity. It's getting weak in the back, but there's definitely quite a few components that are still remaining to be structurally sound. Oh, getting weaker. Ah, come on. Fall for me, please. There we go. That's some components. We're almost done with the iron ingots, at least. This should hopefully finish it off. Oh, it took that part out, at least. Oop. Another part? Where'd that happen? I don't know. Maybe it's just a part that I couldn't see. Yeah, it was a part down underneath the ground that I couldn't see. Come on. There we go. Oh boy. Yeah, it's hard to all this up so 
Ah, uh, well. I got the iron I needed. That's fine. Can I salvage this? No, I can't. I can't sleep in it due to being in single player. Uh, well, first things first, I did level up a few times. I'm going to need to make a portable constructor. So let's go under miscellaneous, unlock that portable constructor. I'm going to need some iron ore, which is right in front of me. How convenient. That's enough iron ore. Put that into construction. We have nine points available. So what's going to be more important? There's some of the new weapons. This is added by uh, Reforged Eden. These are going to be fun to play with, I can tell. A lot of them have some expensive uh, components needed to make it. Some, Most of this is going to be locked off because I'm only level 2. Each of these items are locked off on level categories as well as being locked by the item that is not previously unlocked. So this combat shotgun will not unlock until I'm level 10 and I have at least purchased this level 3 shotgun recipe. So there are definitely some tech tree rules that we must follow. Um, our Warp Constructor is nearly ready. I will collect some more rock. There is an unknown signal. We'll go check that out. We will also keep the blueprint handy. Oh, and our Portable Constructor is ready. So before we do anything, uh, we want to see if we can make... Can we make the portable? Oh, Lord, did they get rid of it? There's a motorbike construction. Oh, no, nope, there it is. You can make the motorbike. Uh, however, not available. Portable hoverbike designed by Forge Aerospace that can be deployed from YouTube bar. Not available in multiplayer. I have no idea what the difference is for this one is, but... Or it's a hover bike. That's what it is. We may have to look at that later, just for kicks. But right now, we just need the motorbike, which takes one motor, ten carbon substrate, four mechanical components, four electronics, one steel plate, and two plastic tubes. Okay, that's going to take a lot more components than. Uh, but I anticipated, so we'll just head on over here. Oh, we do have some iron. We will grab some of these iron bearings. Uh, they're gonna weigh down on us. Yeah, let's let's try and uh, try and find materials that we do need at the moment. This looks to be, yep, it's a copper deposit. There will be plenty of copper down there. However, I've been told that it will not be as easy to drill out with basic tools as it would be in the vanilla game. So I will try my best to stick to bearings and basic surface resources. What I need to work on now, I need some carbon substrate. I forget what it requires. I know it requires plant fiber. Yep, plant fibers and stone dust. So I'll stick some of the resources in here. I do have a detox kit and some energy pills, which are nice. Some canned meat, which is definitely some good food. We're going to set the defense mode and we're going to attack the tree and wait for it to drop some wood. Now usually trees come with plentiful amounts of wood, but I'm unsure. Okay, four. Four is these have quite a lot because one log 
can make 32 plant fibers. That's impressive. Now, it takes 16 plant fibers and two stone dust to make 20 carbon substrate. And in order to make the cargo bus, we need 634 carbon substrate. Now, the game, I have just alt tabbed out of the game for a moment. So, 634. Let's divide that by 20. I need to craft it around 31, 32 times. So I need right around 32 crafts worth, which would also mean... Uh, that would mean 64, right? 64 stone dust. And if I calculate 16 times 32, that would mean 512 plant fibers. So if I just do a tree harvest here, I should have plenty of resources to fill the carbon substrate requirements. Now, it'll take some time for it to craft because it doesn't just craft immediately when you put the materials into the factory. What it actually does is it starts crafting the vehicle based on how long it would usually take to make the individual components. Now if you make the components before you put it in, it will reduce the time because you already put time into crafting materials yourself, or maybe you've collected it from somewhere. Uh, but it definitely will not be an immediate, oh hey, I got a vehicle. It will take, with raw resources, right around 15 minutes. So, it will definitely be a little bit before we can go zippity doo. Um, I do believe we need silicon. There's an iron deposit over there, which is a nice find. Silicon deposit is always, or an iron deposit is always nice to find in early game. Thankfully, there's quite a bit of everything around in this area. What? Oh, that's right. I still have structural integrity on. Let's go check this little place over here out real quick. We might find some goodies inside some chests. Oh. Some eggs. It makes okay food, but you want to be careful because eggs can sh give you straight up indigestion. Okay, there's quite a bit here. Ah, what luck. There's a lot of stuff here that we can make use of. Definitely keep the plants. We have a gun to start with. Kind of help us keep ourselves defended. Thankfully, the ammo is not hard to make, either. <laughs> uh, this game has a certain charm about it that kind of keeps me coming back. I have played Space Engineers, but... I, I, I love Space Engineers, by all means. This particular game, though, just has a... It's that particular charm. Kind of... I think it's just... It's physics engine. It's kind of funny to me, but it's funny in a good way that I can, you know, play around and enjoy it. I mean, for instance, I mean, look at this movement. That's a pretty interesting movement. I can jump fairly high, too. Once you get me a jackpack, then I'll be off to the races. That I will be. Okay. This game doesn't have as an advanced uh, physics engine as Space Engineers does, but I think that's kind of where it also uh, plays a part in my enjoyment, is that I can play Space Engineers if I want something a little more complicated, but I can come to this game if I want something a little more simplistic, something that's easier to build and understand with a lot more freedom. 
Alright, it looks like it is doing a fine job creating what it needs. I'm going to stick some silicon in here because we are going to need 159 ingots. By far, I don't think this is enough to make the required ingots we need. No, it is not. But we will definitely make some ingots anyways. Okay, so let's find some more silicon because we're in need of it. And it's becoming night time. I cannot use my suit light because I am not exactly wearing a space suit. It's fine. Just gotta be wary of uh, raptors, spiders, you know, whatever else might be out there ready to hunt me down. I also would like to know, I will try my best to keep videos within one hour intervals because one can easily get carried away in the space universe and not to say that I'll forget, that I won't forget, I most certainly will forget eventually. And these guys, color insects, they changed the name of them too. These guys are a bit indecisive. I'll, oh, nope, 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 nope. Ooh. Yeah, that hurt like heck there. Um, that hurt like hell. Indeed it did. Um, I will probably want to use this and be a lot more careful. Those guys are a lot tougher than uh, vanilla. I will say that for sure. I will take your eggs though for food because eventually once you come across indigestion uh, pills that can cure indigestion it, it just becomes a, a nice you know fast uh, and ready food and that is a rock we definitely want to break down for some stone those giant rocks especially some of these can grant you quite a bit of stone in fact, we haven't taken a look at the map yet, but we should be able to, uh... Okay, that's, that's enough carbon substrate. That's all the carbon <laughs> That's actually a little more carbon substrate than I actually needed. Okay. gonna shove this in there and we're gonna make the bike because we're gonna need that and we're going to shove these in there put that in there got our bike ready to roll with that um what I'll do here is I'll make as many ingots as I can before I head out because I want to make use of as much of this ore as possible. Um, I don't know if I want to carry these ingots however. I'll, I might not craft any ingots. Uh, iron ingots that is. And I'll just craft some copper ingots because I can store those away in the uh, factory What's the, what the nice thing is is that yeah it's a solar powered motorcycle so I do not need any fuel to run it that's super handy um, I'm gonna try and take this wood and this pick that up my volume is getting a little hefty, that's fine, because what I want to do is I want to take this bike, 
And I want to find a safe place to kind of chill, like near a friendly, and definitely away from uh, any Xerax, which are the enemy. They are an enemy pirate-like faction. Oh wait, what's this? Ah, that's just a bunch of bones. Bones have no purpose. Whoa! They're receiving a little bit of uh, chunk looting lag, but that's fine. That's common. It happens every once in a while, especially more so on new chunks. And being that this is a new world, kind of having to do some of that on the fly and we want to avoid that thing it spits it would leave oh wait a minute was that was is that Talon? yeah that's Talon which means we're near some friendly territory what is that mushrooms Mushrooms make, yeah. You can eat these kinds of mushrooms, so they're safe and edible. Um, if I saw some. Oh, Polaris. This is also friendly territory. Yep. Survey tower. Oh, I want to avoid you, giant, ugly bug. You would kill me in a second, I would believe. Well, found a survey. T Wait a minute, what's this? Big point. I did not notice that. Might be something we could make use of. If it's an abandoned base, we might be able to pick up a uh, couple tools, maybe? If it's safe enough. Sometimes these bases are infested with <laughs> whatever you can find. Well, hello! I think I was meant to find this. Yes, I was meant to find this. Um, let's start up Eda. Solo missions. Debris. Come on. You truly activate mission. Yen. Commander, I have identified a large structure not far from the broken antenna. Profile analysis has determined a 93 map. 93% match with a UCH Pelican class transport. Confirmed, Ida. Can you see how many people are there? What condition they're in? I'm detecting no thermal or electrical transmissions on the ground, but judging by the disturbance to the surrounding terrain, I would estimate that the ship impacted the ground at considerable speed. There may have been survivors, but I'm unable to detect the presence of any human heat signatures. You will need to investigate this on your own. Okay, Ida. Can you plot a course on my HUD to the location of the ship? Even if there's no one there, there should be logs of what happened to the fleet on the ship's computers. Ida, I found it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's because I've already been here. My god. The ship hit the ground hard enough to split in half. I don't see how anyone could walk away from this alive. Observations of the ship's hull using the cameras affixed to each suit conclude that the ship did not crash due to mechanical failure. Damage and burn marks to the hull are consistent with high temperature plasma and explosive detonations. Okay, there's more electronics. <clears throat> sure, it could have been friendly fire. Did the ammunition magazines detonate on re-entry? 
sorry, Commander. The direction of the blast pattern and the melted steel indicate that it was struck from the exterior by a plasma com by a plasma composition, not in my database. Upon scanning, I've detected radioactive traces of the same plasma on several other wreckage sites in the area, as well as structures near the polar regions of the planet with strong EM signatures. <clears throat> I've concluded that the structures near the poles are, in all likelihood, weapon emplacements, communication stations, or military facilities of some sort belonging to an unknown faction. There are many transmissions coming from their location, but nothing that I'm able to decipher. So what should I do then? Just ignore them? After they did this to the Hiddle? I Oh I can't I can't read that as fast. <laughs> Please. Uh if you would if you'd like to read it, uh you may have to read it at your own pace, but I can't uh seem to keep up with it. It's drying my throat out and I forgot to get a drink. But please feel free to pause if you're interested in the lore of the uh, game. I'll probably read it passively to myself. And I might still refer to it. But right now, I can't, ca I can't catch up with what it's expecting me to do. Mm, it's just going way too fast for me to read sometimes. See, we need to look around for storage crates. Uh, oxygen. I might be able to cipher this. I don't know how much it weighs. And it uh, weighs a good amount, apparently. Eh, not terrible, but I do have a bunch of other stuff that I don't need, such as these steel plates. Silicon ore, I kind of need. Uh, logs. Ooh, yeah. I'll get rid of the logs. I can make more of that later. Um, there. Oxygen for any vehicle that I might need it for. Motor. That will come in handy. I think I can just shove that in here. That helped a little bit. Uh, let's see. Maybe we can find a suit or something. I can't do anything with titanium plates at this moment. So I will not bother. Well, well let, me, let me see if I can just grab them in here. Yeah, it does not contribute, so sadly I'm going to have to abandon the titanium plates. They could go towards a capital ship, but I'm not quite ready for a capital ship just yet. I am just going to look around here and see if I can scrap anything up. So far, so good. I'm not finding too much of use. I keep. Yeah, I, I wish I had my suit jet pack right now. I could easily get out of these little situations. Here we go. Signals coming from inside this container. You just succeed in forcing open the container from which the EM signal is emanating. As soon as you break the seal, a horrible smell meets your nose. <laughs> Peer inside. Inside the sealed cargo container is a human body wearing a UCH engineer's uniform in an advanced state of decay. Ida, I've got a body here. Looks like an engineer by the uniform. Biometrics of the body match one Sergeant Pallant, first class. Chief engineer of the UCH-011, Heidelberg. The electromagnetic signal appears to be coming from something inside the container with him. Best get the body. Uh... Sorry about this, buddy. I've got to move you. Search the body. Found the source of the EM signal, Ida. This is PDA. It appears to still have some battery left in it, but the controls are locked and I can't access them. 
Now that the device is no longer inside a shielded container, I can remotely access the PDA and download the device logs. Do it. I need to know what happened here. I retrieved the personal log files and messages from Sergeant Palance, PDA commander. I'll run analysis and forward the decrypted logs to your PDA. You'll be able to access them through the PDA logs tab or via the mission task information. Read them at your leisure. This is there's nothing more you can do here, commander. But there may be additional logs elsewhere in the wreckage. Should we, you know, bury them? You're free to do whatever you want with the body, Commander. However, a proper UCH naval burial requires that you transport the body back to Earth. <laughs> At a later time, if you don't rejoin with the UCH fleet, you can inform command of Sergeant Pound's body and they can, if possible, retrieve the body for proper UCH ceremony. Until that time, it's best to leave the body inside your cargo container where it is not to be dis well, where it will not be disturbed. Yes, you're right, Ida. You close and relock the cargo container with Sergeant Pallet's body inside. Ah, I want to read that. I want to read that so bad, but I keep skipping. What's this? Oh, computer. I'm going to go over on resources, but I don't mind, just because this is a beginning situation. Uh, I am running close to time here, but I do want to... Ooh, advanced electronics? A set of complex electronics you reinforced for use in extreme environments, used in high-end devices and manufacturing. I might, I'll try and preserve that. There's another cargo container. Some electronics I can shove in here. There's a little bit of extra in the copper and get side of things. Here's another container. Optical fiber will help with silicon. Oh, some more containers I've missed. There's a decent amount of titanium plates here and there. Multi-charge, definitely will want that. This will help with, I think this, yeah, silicate. Yeah, that definitely helped. Uh, if that's the case, maybe we can find some more glass items around here and salvage those. Uh, as you can definitely tell, survival just kind of, it definitely does start out in a rough situation. And is that an armor locker? It is, but there is no armor to be found, sadly. Okay. Ah, oh, yes. Definitely. Technology is to be found here. Um, I want to leave the armor locker in case if I find any armor. Come on, get out of here, please. Yeah, like I said, this game has a particular charm that I seem to fall for, such as the physics system. Uh, can I? Ah, I can't get up there. Too difficult. The physics system in here is pretty janky by most standards. <laughs> But, uh, you get used to it after a while. So it has its advantages. Especially out, out when uh, moonwalking on a moon. It can be uh, quite fun and helpful. <laughs> uh, hopefully this landing gear can give me a lot of precious components needed to create the uh, hovercraft. Now that I think about it, there's also a uh, destroyed vessel over there that I should check out. Not much that I could use out of that. I think this might give me some opticals. No, just steel plating. Okay. I don't know why I thought I could find optical fiber in there. Well, how about this flare? 
Uh, gave me a bit of optical fiber, which will be helpful. I'm just gonna spend my current time salvaging, apparently. Oh, here's another signal. Pull open the door to the cargo container to reveal nothing. This container appears to be empty, aside from some scrap metal and structural plastic in the bomb tray. This container looks like a buzz, Tita. Are you sure this is the right spot? Yes, Commander. There's a faint electronic signal coming from inside the container. You are unlikely to uncover another dead body in so small a pile of debris. Search junk at the bottom of the container. I'll be damned. There's a logistics management unit under the junk. Without this will be any use to me. There, these are only used to record and manage cargo manifests, and the screen is cracked anyways. Eda, it's still a bust. Just a LMU in sleep mode. I'll check elsewhere. Just a moment, Commander. Logistics units contain transfer records, access logs, and user notes. There's usually more information in one of these devices than most people realize. Please connect your suit to the data port on the bottom of that pad, and I will attempt to retrieve the logs. Connect to the logistics management unit. New device detected. Extracting data? Logistics.dat.log.txt successfully downloaded. Temporary directory. Uploading temp files to satellite. 100%. Complete. I have received the logistics files, Commander. I have confirmed that there is additional data in the device's logs. I'd like to review the files now, or should I send them to your PDA? Ah, uh, we'll forward them. What's next? Oh, Sathium! Okay. On with the logs. I'm willing to speculate at this point. I've marked the ship's constructor on your display. Please check the production logs next. Oh, oh, damn. That's... Is that an advanced constructor? That's a large constructor. I might be able to get some good components out of that. Looks like the power is out. Should be able to connect my suit's battery to constructor console long enough to read the constructor logs. Connect the cable from the suit's power supply to constructor's console. Charging. Battery status. Less than 1%. Remaining power, 3 minutes and 11 seconds. Board active. Access logs. Looks like they made 8 tents, which means there's at least 8 survivors. The rest of the stuff the constructor made, pretty standard stuff. Supplies, communications equipment, motorbike, and a pair of UCH Raider kits. Standard supplies for a journey over land. It's like they loaded up the rest of the ship's supplies and salvaged what they could carry and headed away from the ship. Which makes sense, since this place would have likely drawn attention from the enemy if they hung around here for too long. But I guess I sh we should be on the lookout for a pair of UCH Raiders. I scanned the planet for any heat signatures belonging to UCH crew and vehicles, Commander. There are no other members of the UCH Navy anywhere on this planet. However, I wanted from the logs, aside from confirmation of survivors, was a frame of reference for the inconsistencies present in the other evidence gathered from Ensign Emerson and Sergeant Pallant's log files. So have you figured out what the problem is, Ida? I am 80% certain, Commander. The final piece of the puzzle, so to speak, should be found on the ship's bridge. There is a console there that is still functional, but inactive. Oh my goodness. So you're telling me there's a life console on the bridge and you didn't tell me to go there first? Why send me to go digging through the dirt and boxes full of dead bodies when everything we needed to know is right there on the bridge? Because, Commander, that console on the bridge is, is both unshielded and will draw a great deal of power when it's activated. I have identified two unmanned aerial vessels patrolling near your current position. 
and activating that console will undoubtedly draw their attention. It was necessary to avoid putting you in additional danger. You want to discover the truth? That console is our only remaining source for finding the surviving crew of the Heidelberg and the rest of the UCH fleet. For good or ill, it is the only source of information left open to us, Commander. I leave the decision to you. Ah, yeah, about that. We will uh, save that for next one. Right now, I'm going to salvage this bad boy, take its components, shove them into here. Was it take this? No, I won't take it. Okay. I'm nearly there. I can salvage this O2 tank, maybe for good parts. It's my inventory space not looking too good. Oh, cobalt alloy? That will come in handy. Um, not much for my current project. Let's head over to this damaged vessel, and it might contain the components we need. Yeah, it's a damaged UCH dart. Got thrusters. I uh, kind of almost had all the thrusters it needed. It's definitely got no gas in it, so... Salvage the cockpit. It should give us plentiful amount of materials, hopefully. Yes, that did happen to give us glass, which last time I remember gave us a decent amount of silicon. Right? Storage box. Oh, what a find! We can get at least 10 ingots out of that. Some biofuel? Uh, we don't have space. Uh, I'm gonna drop some of these other materials. Don't need stone dust. Um, let's see what this small thruster might give us. Oh yes, that definitely helps. Um, optical fiber doesn't give us much in the ways of silicon however, so that might be a salvage in vain. Um, the storage box will only give us plating. Oh, this landing gear might give us something. Still not much. Cargo container? I'll take the multi-charge. Uh, I remember correctly, this is just going to give steel plating. Yep, steel plating. Don't need steel plating. A mini fridge? That might give us something. Eh, still, not very much in what we need. Uh. Uh. Spotlight. Ah, uh, small amount of optical fiber. Oh, we're getting so close. Uh, I do want to keep the cobalt ore. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Oh, that. no. Oh. 
bad trip. Yikes, I may have made a mistake here. <laughs> um, Empiripedia, getting started. Frequently asked questions. Is it getting started? No. Where is it? Resources. Yay. Comments and feedback. Uh oh. Well, they changed the Empiripedia quite a bit. You used to find information on. You used to find information on what these status effects did, but now um, we're going to have to do a little search. Let's see here. Does a bad trip do? Uh... Okay, so a bad trip is essentially going to drain my stamina. Yep, yep. I should have not eaten mushroom. Because now my hunger is draining rapidly. Thankfully I have an emergency ration. I will definitely not do that again. Uh, oh! Mm. I might get a decent amount of material out of this. Ah, bad trip. Anyway, fight against it? Doesn't appear to be a way to fight against it. I have caused myself more trouble than I should have caused. Ah, the bad trip should be over in a minute. It still kind of bites that I've lost so much food so fast. Fiber, flex coil, adds in a bit of copper, loader, definitely helps, or more motors, so that definitely helps, I will do it to this other one, I just wish that I had a multi-tool, it would go by much faster. Look at that. I'm nearly starving. I don't think I remember mushrooms doing that before, but that must be a uh, reforged Eden kind of thing. carry all this even though as valuable as that material is. Wait a minute. Oh no 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 that's not doing anything. Uh oh, darn. Oh no. Hangover. Well thankfully I got some water to cure that. And thankfully this canned meat is around. I want to try and save my emergency rations for, well, mostly emergency cases. Um, well, it's kind of bites. I was hoping to find some more silicon somewhere, but 
I don't think I'll find it. Uh, is, there a, is this the front end of the capital ship? <gasps> yes, it is. I should have been a little more observant. All right. We will salvage this class. I can't carry these titanium plates. Well, we're definitely probably going to meet up with our silicon. But we're still going to need more copper. That'll still need to be solved. Ah. Can't get up there. I don't think anyways. Okay, right here? If I could jump. Here we go. Uh, that's an interesting place to put a door. Ah, here we go. This will do. Road plots, but I'm not going to try and pick those up. Oh, oh! I'm so glad I didn't break, didn't break a leg there. But here's some more glass. And I think after this, this is where I'll call it a video. I know it hasn't been uh, full of events quite yet, but I'm sure that will change once we're able to get going place to place more efficiently um, what can I break you down into oh I can break you down into a whole bunch of stuff can I Plastic tubes, trash. Yeah, it was just a whole bunch of plastic tubes. Yeah, but it still didn't give me enough stuff. So now I think I'm stuck in here. Wait a minute, that's a fool. Oh wow, I'm surprised that I even made that. This is a fuel tank right here, so I should be able to salvage some promethium fuel from it. Oh no, that's an O2 tank. Ah, uh, steel plates. Um, I don't need mechanical components. Boiled food. Doesn't need to be there. Alright, well, anyways, in any account, uh, as uneventful this has been currently, uh, we should be able to get a hovercraft going in the next episode and get that rolled out. Then we, once we do that, we can hopefully find some friendly factions to live next to. Uh, or maybe even inside, because I don't think it angers them that much to, uh, or it does if you have a vessel in their territory for too long, so we'll have to think about that. But, uh, I hope you enjoyed. I'm, uh, going to get some sleep, that's for sure. It is kind of late. But, uh, again, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have a good night, a good day, and I hope to see you next episode. Bye-bye.